Hi folks, Matt Allington here. I was just browsing powerpivotforum.com.au and saw this interesting question. This member wants to take this long column of data and restructure it so it can be used. Now, actually, I'm going to make this up as I go. So I'm going to work through the problem pretty much live on the screen and uh, we'll see how we go. Uh, first thing I did was I downloaded the data and you can see the data here in the Excel spreadsheet. It's always great to have some good sample data. Okay, now this is an interesting little problem because it's I can tell from the pattern here that there are two records in this first invoice, but there are five records in this second invoice. And so it appears that the number of records varies depending on the invoice. So, um, so that's going to... Uh, be an issue which we need to take into account. All right, so I think the first thing I'll turn that into a table. Oh, that's no good because I don't want the header. So try again, control L. My table doesn't have headers. Okay, and now I'll load it using from table from range. And so I've got it loaded up into Power Query. Of course, this is going to be the identical approach even if I was using Power BI or some other source of data. Okay, so how am I going to approach this? I can see I've got this invoice number and this invoice number here refers to every record down until there is a new invoice number. So I think what I'll do is I'll split this column based on the colon. The colon only exists in the invoice number row. Now when I go to split it, I want to actually add a new column first because I don't want to destroy this column. So I think what I'll do is add a duplicate column first and now I'll split this column doing a transform split column by delimiter. I'll split it based on the colon and there's only one anyway. And so now what this has done is it's given me a column here with the invoice number and I can now fill this down. And so now I've got the correct invoice number against every single row in this table. Okay, so the next thing I'll do, I think I'll just tidy this up a little bit. So I'll get rid of any of these rows that has, oh, I'm not sure what this bag is. I need to go and have a look at that. But I'll get rid of invoice price SKU. So let me get rid of that first. And looking down here, I'm not sure what this IT memo is. That's a bit of an issue. And this bag item so I would need to go and check back with the original source to understand what those are so I can't really answer that for now so I'm just going to remove those two uh, these are duplicates now so I can get rid of this and I'll tidy things up this is my data and this is my invoice number Okay, now the next step is looking pretty tricky to me because I've got four rows of data here. The first two are the, the SKU number and then the price. So I somehow I need to flatten these out. I need two separate columns. Now there is a technique that I've used before, um, unpivoting text data, but that relies on there being a consistent number of rows for each of these invoices, but that is not the case. So just using a little bit of guesswork and intuition here, I think what I need to do is work out how many sets of data there are per invoice. Once I know how many sets of data there are, I think I should be able to unpivot them appropriately. So let's see how we go there. Okay, so the first thing is how many rows for each invoice. So I'm going to rename this step. I'm just gonna call it table. Now, one of the features of Power Query that's not well known is that you don't have to refer to the steps in consecutive order. It's fine to jump around all you want. All right, so let me add a new step. Now that I've got this table step defined, I wanna know how many rows there are for each invoice. So to do that, I can just use a group by invoice number, count the rows, that'll give me exactly as I want. So here's the invoice number and how many rows there are for each invoice number. I'd like to now see the total number of rows next to the invoice number here. 
And so what I can do is I can add a custom step and by default it will pick the previous row, the grouped rows, but I actually want the one before that, the table. So I can just replace this with table. So there's what I had before and I still have this group rows. And so I should be able to join these together because here I have the invoice number and here I have the invoice number with the count and so I should be able to do a join. So I'm going to come here and try and merge queries. Now when you do this merge it's a little bit tricky because you can refer to the previous step but I like to do it using the UI. So at this point in time all I can do is using the UI I can merge it with itself. So once I've done that merge I can come up here and this you can see table nested join on the left side I've got custom one invoice number so that was this step here and then I can change the, the right hand side of this merge to be table invoice number so when I do that then I should be able to uh, no not not table it was this grouped rows invoice number okay let's see now okay there's the count so I can go and grab the count and there we have it so now I've got invoice number and the count of rows for each session so what to do now I think what I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to put a label that says these first two are the SKU and these second two are the price so basically if I, I need a row count for each of these invoices. Now I have done this before and I like to use the UI. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to add a column, an index column starting from one. And what that does is it generates this line of code, which takes the previous step, expanded column, custom one, and then adds an index column. So I literally just did that in order to generate this code. So I'm going to cut that and delete that step. So now in the clipboard I have that line of code. Okay, so what I want now is I want that line of code, that line of code that counts starting from one and it increases forever. Instead of it increasing forever, I want it to work within each invoice number. So I want it to go one, two, three, four and then start again here, one, two, three, all the way up to 10 and so on. Now, previously I did this grouped by column and this gave me this count. And if you look at the code here, you can see that this step did a group of the table and then it did a row count. And so this little trick that I've developed basically replaces this line of code with the line that I currently have in the clipboard. So let me show you to explain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a group by. Once again, I'm only doing this in order to generate the line of code. And instead of doing the table dot row count, um, in fact, notice this little underscore here. This basically is a self-referencing line of code. So this is basically saying repeat for each of the invoice numbers. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this function here with the line of code I have in the clipboard. And then instead of saying refer to the previous step, I'm going to use that same underscore character. Now when I do this, it's going to return um, a table, but I, I need to change this to table. Because if I don't change this to table, I can't expand the data. So I go table, and now I can go and expand, hopefully, the extra data. I've already got the invoice number, so I don't need that again. And there we have it. There's our index 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1 through to 10, and then 1 through to 10. And so now that I've got that, I'm thinking I can do a straight division. I might just turn these into numbers. And so basically, if the index is less than or equal to this column here, let me call this count. So if the index is less than or equal to half of the count, then it's the SKU, otherwise it's the price per unit. So I'm going to add a custom column with that formula. If 
the index greater than the count divided by 2, in other words if it's in the second half, then I just want to return the index subtract the count divided by 2, else just give me the index. Okay, so 1, 2, 1, 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now this is a unique ID that tells me the sets of data for each invoice. Now I think I need to identify which rows are the SKU and which ones are the price. So I'm basically just going to copy this if statement here and I'll add a new customs column with basically the same formula except instead of returning the row number this will be the price otherwise it's the SKU so let's see how that goes okay so SKU price, SKU price now a bit of tidying up, I'll get rid of these there's the data um, I need to, I basically need to join these together because I need the invoice number and the line number to be pairs for SKU and price. Easy to do, so I'll merge. Okay, so there's the unique ID and then I basically need to pivot this data I think so I'm going to pivot the values is the data and I need to set this to don't aggregate okay so this looks like it could be right so now I can split this column again by the dash so this should be the invoice number, this should be the line number, Oops. SKU and price, I guess I can auto detect and close and load and see what happens. Okay, now I only did this on a subset of the data, but from what I can see, it seems to be working just fine. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you'd like to learn to be a superhero with Power Query, check out my online training course available at this link here.